The final episode starts with a brief scene in 1997 Louisiana. Young Dee Dee and six-year-old Gypsy lay outside on the grounds as they have been homeless after Emma died. Dee Dee could not afford to buy her mother's house, so she had no option but to pack her bags. As they lay head to head looking at the stars, they promise to protect each other forever. The show cuts to 2015. Nick and Gypsy are announced about their punishment if they were to be found guilty. They would both be charged with first-degree murder meaning they could get life imprisonment or death penalty. The judge asks if Gypsy has anything to say on this. Her lawyer encourages her to say something. Gypsy shakily stands up and pleads that she isn't guilty. She maintains that she could never kill her mother before the hearing adjourns. In the next scene, Gypsy sits alone with her lawyer. She is still unaware that she can actually get the death penalty for her crimes. So, she asks if she could really be executed. To which the lawyer explains that, right now, people see Gypsy as a cold-blooded murderer. Gypsy once again clarifies that she couldn't kill her mother as she loved her so much. The lawyer shrugs off and tells her they must change the story. They need to get people on her side, so Gypsy has to appear more sympathetic. The lawyer then suggests getting a hold of Gypsy's medical records to prove that Dee Dee had been lying and manipulating Gypsy about her medical conditions. This way, they could win the case. But there's a catch. The lawyer can't get the records because of the power of attorney documents that Dee Dee had Gypsy sign forcefully. This gave Gypsy's power of attorney to her mother, so she needs her dad to retrieve the papers. Her lawyer then suggests Gypsy call her dad, but Gypsy refuses, saying she doesn't have one. She adds that he was never present in her life while her mom worked so hard to care for her all this time. Later, the prison doctor examines Gypsy, and she takes this opportunity to ask her if she can help get the medical records. But the doctor bluntly refuses and seems pretty harsh with Gypsy. The doctor is not too keen on having Gypsy with fake problems when others in prison have actual medical issues like cancer and stabbing. The doctor removes Gypsy's feeding tube, as she no longer needs it. But when Gypsy requests to keep the tube as it is the last thing she has of her mom, the doctor tells her it is now a biohazard and throws it into a dustbin. Prison life for Gypsy becomes worse as she cannot make any friends. She eats lunch alone and softly cries in her bed. When the female inmates, including Gypsy, walk in a line outside, Nick spots her and tells how they are like the infamous couple Bonnie and Clyde they will eventually die together. But it's not what Gypsy wanted to hear. Later, Gypsy stands in a line to make a phone call to Lacey. But Lacey isn't so receptive after discovering the truth about Gypsy and her mother. Gypsy explains that the media is circulating fake news, and she isn't guilty of the murder. She also asks Lacey to visit her in prison so they can talk in person. But Lacey is reluctant. Lacey asks if Gypsy could walk this whole time and Gypsy goes numb. She explains her situation before Lacey says she has to go and hangs up. With no one to turn to, Gypsy makes another call, this time to her estranged father, Rod. While the inmate behind her scolds her for taking too much time, she says that she knows he doesn't really know her but asks him for a favor. Gypsy wants her dad to bring her medical records since it's the only way out for her. Elsewhere, Mel and other neighbors are pissed at the Blanchard for lying and cheating right under their nose. Mel calls them vampires, who suck them dry off their trust and goodwill. But Lacey thinks there's more to the Blanchard story. She tells her mother that Gypsy had called her the other day, and asked her to visit her, only making Mel more pissed. Back in prison, Gypsy is informed that someone has come to visit her. She thinks it's Lacey, only to find her dad Rod in the waiting room. After strained hellos, he gives her the medical records that his daughter had asked for. Rod takes this visiting opportunity to point out multiple instances where Dee Dee lied to doctors about Gypsy's medical condition like almost a whole week of daily seizures and a case of leukemia at the age of three that never really happened. Gypsy realizes her mother never let her speak for her and always made sure Gypsy obliged her orders. Rod then clarifies that by speaking for Gypsy, Dee Dee made Gypsy her prisoner. But Gypsy fires back that at least her mother was there for her and always loved her. Rod tries to explain that he met Dee Dee when he was just 17 years old, but she was much older. He was so young that he didn't know how to take responsibility, but he still loves her. Rod adds he tried to visit Gypsy many times, but Dee Dee wouldn't let him as she always had some reasons not to. Gypsy, however, doesn't believe his excuses and says he could have tried harder. Rod says that her mother made that difficult, especially because she moved Gypsy from one place to another. He also points out that he had been sending them checks every month. Gypsy doesn't want to hear her dad justify his actions anymore, 
so she starts to gather the medical records to leave. She also doesn't want to believe how much her mother potentially lied to her. Just before she prepares to leave, her dad begs her to stay for a second and hurriedly shows baby pictures of her with him. He tries to convince her that he was with her from the day she was born, showing a picture of him holding an infant gypsy. Rod also has a photo of them at the Special Olympics, when she was just eight years old. It finally catches Gypsy's attention, as she realizes her mother always claimed that she had invited Rod but he refused to come. Things finally make sense for Gypsy, and she starts to cry. Nod apologizes for not being around more. Next, it's the pre-trial conference for Gypsy and Nick. Gypsy looks back at the audience seat and firmly sighs when she sees her dad. Her lawyer presents the medical records for evidence showing Dee Dee manipulated her daughter and controlled her entire life. The evidence also separates Gypsy's trial from Nick's as Gypsy was abused by Dee Dee. So the circumstances around her are very different than Nick's. Not surprisingly, this move shocks Nick as he tearfully says that he did the deeds just for Gypsy. After the conference, Gypsy asks her lawyer if her separate trial means she won't get the death penalty. The lawyer explains that Gypsy needs to plead guilty and, hopefully, she gets a deal with less prison time. Meanwhile, Mel and Gypsy watch a news segment on Gypsy's trial on their television. Mel is still pissed and turns off her television before calling the Blanchard con artists. Lacey blames herself for what happened and reveals to her mom that she was the one who showed Gypsy the dating website where she met Nick. There were times when Gypsy shared some things, but she disregarded them as she thought it was all fantasies in her head. She regrets she missed potential signs. Just then, Gypsy once again calls her from prison, only this time she ignores it. Later, Mel suggests maybe Lacey should talk to Gypsy. Lacey hesitates initially, but her mom encourages her to look Gypsy in the eye after all the lies. But instead of Lacey, Mel ends up visiting Gypsy at the prison. Mel confronts Gypsy and asks when she knew she could walk on her two feet instead of using a wheelchair. Gypsy sighs for a while and asks if Mel can be her mom now that she needs one. She tries to explain that she trusted her mom until she didn't let her grow up. Mel's expression clearly shows that she has been heartbroken with Dee Dee and Gypsy's lies since they were such good neighbors. Mel then says that Gypsy can't always be the person Dee Dee made her into, and she is sorry that she cannot be her mom Gypsy is, in fact on her own now. Before she concludes her visit, Mel remarks that sometimes the only way out is through. Gypsy tearfully watches her leave, realizing everyone close to her now hates her. The show then flashes back to the murder night. Gypsy texts Nick to text her when he arrives at her door with gloves on. She joins her mother in bed and reminisces the time they spent looking at the stars together back in 1997. That was when they promised to protect each other, as shown at the start of the episode. As they talk, Gypsy starts to get emotional since she knows it will be the last night with her mom. She abruptly tells her mom goodnight, and after a while, Dee Dee also falls asleep. Once her mom is deep in her sleep, Gypsy starts to pack her suitcase while Nick arrives at their front porch. She also readies the murder weapon before getting the door for her boyfriend. She then tiptoes through the hallway and urges Nick not to make any sound. Gypsy gives Nick the knife and leads him to Dee Dee's room. Since she doesn't want to see her mom getting stabbed to death, Gypsy ducks herself into the bathroom. After some time, the horror starts as she hears her mom scream in pain and fights. Back with pain, Gypsy covers her ears, trying to block out the sounds of her mom screaming with pain. She keeps pacing in the bathroom for a while before sinking to the floor and breaking down after hearing her mom screeching for one last time. There's silence for a moment. Just then, Nick knocks on the bathroom door and asks to let him in. Nick is equally nervous as he shakes and breathes hard after killing Dee Dee. He has blood all over his neck and the murder weapon. Gypsy immediately takes the knife, but doesn't wear any gloves. She shakily rinses blood off of it. There's a large cut on Nick's hand as they remove the gloves. Gypsy then places a bandage over the wound and gets wet wipes to clean up her boyfriend. Next, the couple heads to Gypsy's room, but she stops when she sees her mom's dead body. Nick assures her that he has taken care of it and leads Gypsy to her room. The couple still cannot sink into what they just did, but Gypsy forces herself to be positive. She kisses her boyfriend, reminding him that this is the happy ending she always wanted yet another act. Nick then clears a bunch of stuffed animals lying all over Gypsy's bed. He pulls Gypsy down, and the two become physically intimate with one another. In the following scene, Gypsy readies herself with some makeup, while Nick takes his time to clean blood stains off his clothes. She then calls a taxi before leaving her pet guinea pigs outside in the wild. Gypsy packs her things and wears her grandma's ring. Nick asks her one last time if she's ready to run away with him, and she convincingly gives a positive nod. Finally, the two leave the house. In the present, Gypsy is taken back to her jail room after her meeting with Mel. She misses her mom and imagines that she is with her once inside her room. In the final scene, 
The series informs the audience that Gypsy pled guilty to second-degree murder after a year of incarceration. She is currently serving 10 years of jail time and plans to start her family once she gets out. On the other hand, Nick has been convicted of first-degree murder and is serving life imprisonment without parole. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching.